ADAPT Plus was the open label extension <clears throat> of ADAPT, a multinational double-blinded study looking at the efficacy of a novel therapeutic called Efgartigamod. Efgartigamod is a small FC fragment that has been engineered to bind to the neonatal FC receptor. The neonatal FC receptor has come into play in recognition as a salvage pathway for immunoglobulin, particularly immunoglobulin G. And as such, accounts for its prolonged half-life relative to any of the other immunoglobulins, IgM, IgA, et cetera. Immunoglobulin is taken up by the cell, bound FCRN, and then recycled back to the vascular space. And by blocking the neonatal FC receptor so that immunoglobulin can't bind to it, it's outcompeted for by this drug, the IgG ergo antibody is shunted to the lysosome and destroyed. So the study was designed to look at its efficacy, its reproducibility, and its durability. And the open label extended these observations for a prolonged period of time. The open label mimicked the blinded portion of the study. And patients who were randomized to receive courses of Fcartigamod four weekly infusions, followed by an observation period. In the blinded study, that period was for a minimum of eight weeks if one did not respond, or if they did respond to come back within two points of their original myasthenia gravis activities of daily living score. The definition of response in both arms of the study was what we called an MG response, MGADL responder. That is, they had to have at least two-point change, and they had to sustain it over four consecutive weeks. And the onset of improvement had to occur within a week of their last infusion. And so patients were treated, observed, and if they improved, we waited till they relapsed and then um, retreated again. And this carried forth over into the open label study. We found that improvement was very rapid, occurring within the first infusion or after the first infusion, maximum improvement occurring within one week of their fourth infusion. And then they slowly returned towards baseline or lost their improvement, uh, if you will. Of note, um, 98, 99% of patients in the blinded phase rolled over in the open label phase, a testament to uh, the efficacy of the drug. When we looked at the repeatability of courses of infusion in the open label, we found that they were pretty much matched. And the patients achieved similar degrees of IgG and antibody reduction uh, as they did in the blinded phase. And each subsequent course essentially mimicked the, the first, achieving somewhere around 60% reduction in IgG, nearly 58, 59% reduction in circulating antibody titer. What was interesting in the blinded phase that also carried over into the open label phase was the durability of response. And on average, more than 50% of patients achieved at least an eight-week improvement by this artificial, if you will, responder analysis definition. A third of those had at least a 12-week improvement. And yes, some 11% or so had an eight, six to eight-week improvement. This is much faster improvement than we see with any of the other treatments we have in our toolbox, including IVIG and to some degree plasma exchange. So very rapid producing efficacy that was then uh, sustained. The safety profile was nominal, um, much similar between the placebo arm and the treated arm over time. Slightly more individuals developed mild infections, like a urinary tract infection. The numbers, however, in the time duration, in my opinion, is too short. 
Uh, and we need much longer data just to see how concerning this is. Of course, we're removing immunoglobulin, but the mechanisms to mount an attack against an infection, et cetera, are all there. So there's no reason why you can't recognize and, and deal with that infection. But as it is, the individual showed this slightly increased uh, percent risk. Infusion-related reactions were very similar, in fact, more in the placebo arm than in the treated arm. There were four deaths, five deaths uh, that were reported unrelated to the investigational drug. Coronary artery disease was one, a malignant lung cancer that was found after study entry. Someone had COVID pneumonia, developed septic shock. Uh, so the investigators involved in their care felt these were, were unrelated. When we look at the long-term need over the course of, of time, it appears on average individuals required less than five courses of infusion per year. And this is annualized, so there's statistics in play. But somewhere between four and five infusions were necessary to maintain their degree improvement. So what we have is a very rapidly acting, very safe drug from what we can tell at the moment that's also quite efficacious. Uh, that produces degrees of improvement that are um, very acceptable to the patient and to the clinician um, without all of the long-term potential adverse risk profiles that we see with things like steroids and mycophenolate and azathioprine, rituximab, et cetera.